Okay, so hello everybody. I'm Dominic Norton or on social media, also Mr. Hackathon. Uh, what I'll be walking through today is an introduction to building software without coding. Over the last 10, 15 years, there's been a huge movement on creative ways to build software, and it's becoming more and more easier for people to build software. Obviously, we love programming, which, which means that we still want to be able to program, but you can combine your skills with new and interesting technology to really speed up the process of developing software. So that's kind of what we'll go over. I'll go over a little bit about me. Um, I'll go over about the technologies and then we'll do a quick workshop on how you actually do it yourself. So about me, I've already introduced my name. My programming journey actually started with HTML and CSS, if you can call them programming languages. But back in the day, there used to be a platform called MySpace. It was the Facebook before Facebook and you could actually customize and reprogram the UI using HTML and CSS. And that's kind of where my interests sparked with programming and now no code. Uh, at, also at that time, you had a tool called Dreamweaver, which was a web design tool similar to Wix, if you're familiar with Wix or Squarespace or a little bit like WordPress. Um, but that, that was a long time ago. I, I'm not sure if that's still around. I'm also a former international athlete and architectural technologist. So I played basketball growing up. Uh, for a very, very long time, I played basketball. Um, I got a scholarship to go to the US and I played basketball in the US and I was a student athlete in the US. I was an architecture student in the US. And the unique thing about my journey is that I love designing, I love creating, but I wanted a more technical challenge. And my professors introduced me to technology within the architecture industry. These are 3D printers, these are drones, these are using algorithms to create buildings, um, lots of creative things in the architecture technology space. And that's why I ended up doing as a professional, as an engineer in the US. I'm also a content creator. I create a lot of content for brands on TikTok. I advise startups and I create learning courses for people to learn how to build software without coding. Today's conversation will really be talking a little bit about why is no code and low code interesting, some of the technology, some of the career paths and the communities that you can get involved with. So when you get into the field, whether you want to become a startup founder, whether you want to create software for charities, or whether you want to work for a, a big company, the challenge of developing software is that it's very, very expensive. It's a specialist skill, so not everybody has these skills, and it, is, it can be very time consuming. This is one of the biggest problems or hurdles to developing softwares for most organizations. Introducing no code. So no code is a, or sometimes people call it visual development. It's an umbrella term. So it's a term, it's a generic term used to describe products that allow you to develop software without coding. So this can, this looks different in the VR space to the gaming space because you can develop games without coding. Um, you can develop virtual reality experiences without coding. You can develop native mobile applications without coding, but no code is a generic term. You may have heard me use the term low code. So low code uses some code to almost give this no code term superpowers. So the best is both worlds. The best is knowing how to code enough to be dangerous or to be powerful and leveraging the no-code tools for the speed and the cost efficiency. If anyone has any questions, feel free to just shout them out because I can't actually see, um, see you if you put your hand up or write anything in a chat. So some of the technologies. Website builders. So I mentioned WordPress, which is probably one of the most powerful and popular no-code tools, but you also have Wix, Squarespace, Webflow, Bubble, you have lots of tools that allow you to create websites without coding. If you are interested in social impact, this can be brilliant. 
for social impact causes. If you wanted to do this for local businesses, you can do that for local businesses. If you want to start your own business, it's a quick and easy way to create a website. Automation tools. So what we're doing here in the UK and what we do in, in the US is we automate a lot of tweets. We automate invoices being created. If anything has an API, chances are you can automate it. And this is in the no-code space. So there's tools like Zapier, there's tools like Parabola, there's tools like Make that allow you to automate software. Virtual augmented reality experiences, whether we're talking about Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook, or TikTok, you can create augmented, augmented reality experiences. Gaming, one of the most popular gaming no-code platforms is Buildbox, but you can use Unity to create games without coding. You can also use a tool called Flowlab. Web3, so if you're really interested in blockchain, you can create NFTs without coding, NFT marketplaces without coding, you can create cryptocurrencies without coding, really anything in the web free space in 2022, you can do without coding. Chatbots and voice applications. If you're familiar with Alexa, if you're familiar with Google, you can create chatbots for businesses. You can create chatbots to help people understand and learn. Really, the sky's the limit. Databases. Maybe you're a front end engineer and you love really programming in front end, but you find creating databases, maintaining and managing databases extremely hard. You can use tools like Xano to maintain a database really easily. And mobile applications. So you'll see shortly in future slides, some of the, some mobile applications I've created, you can create mobile applications without code into. Something I want to add before moving on is especially when it comes to mobile applications is typically people think that the platform owns the code or they own the application. That's not the case. There's some applications that allow you to export the code. For example, Flutterflow allows you to export Flutter code. Um, you have Adalo that allows you to publish directly to the Google Play Store and the App Store. And what we're going to be using today is Glide. Glide with Glide, if you want to publish to the Google Play Store or App Store, you have to use a third party uh, tool to actually do that. But you can own the code from that too. So careers and opportunities. There are lots of opportunities in the no code and low code space. One is being a citizen developer. So if you Google citizen developer, you'll find an increase in the trends of this being used. Across the world, there are people that are not necessarily technical. Maybe they work as a business analyst. Maybe they work in marketing. Maybe they work in sales. But they are using and creating software. And this is where no code comes in. So they're creating automations. They're finding ways to make their life easier. You can be a freelance developer. There's so many people in the US, UK, Europe that want applications and websites made. They're consistently looking to Africa, Asia. They're looking to different places in Europe to for people that can make these applications and you can be a freelance developer. You can manage an agency. So if you have better management skills, you can actually manage freelance developers, get the work and hire freelance developers locally to actually do that. You can be a founder. So there's two, there's two routes for a founder. There's a bootstrap route and a VC backed route. So bootstrap just means, let's say you build an app. Let's say you build an app and you generate ad money from your app. You then use that ad money to improve the app, to pay people, to do different things. Uh, you're not taking no investment from anybody. VC backed means you're taking investment for, from somebody and you give up equity and ownership of the app or the company. Two very different routes, but no code allows you to develop applications for both. You can be a content creator or a structure. So this is part of what I do is create content. I teach people how to make, make software without coding and brands can pay you to do this. Companies can pay you to do this. And typically companies bring me in, they pay me to teach their employees how to make apps without coding. 
also don't you don't think you have to monetize straight away or monetize at all you can just create apps for the fun of creating apps and if you have a spare weekend or if you have an evening where you're free it's a great fun way to spend your weekend or evening when you're in the no code space or when you're in the really entrepreneur space community is almost everything to you it's what provides you support what provides you information and when it comes to no code there are some really amazing communities so on deck is one really amazing community it's a global community of people all across the world building really interesting things 100 days of no code so if you actually search this hashtag on twitter you will see lots of people that are building with no code and going through these micro courses learning how to build stuff with no code makeupad there's also courses really great courses and instruction and community on Makerpad. Indie Hackers is more a forum, and it's a forum where you can learn and ask questions. And Product Hunt is a great resource for you to actually launch your app or product and gain users and gain traction. So projects, I'll show you some of the projects that I have made before we go on to actually making something live. But this, is, this was one that I used as a test but it was called Fundemic, Fundemics, and it was a scholarship app for people in the United States. So it's just a directory where they could find scholarships and apply for scholarships. Missing Black People. So this was featured in Vice UK. This was featured in lots of news outlets in the UK, and it was for Missing Black People in the UK. And what I did, I automated the curation of Missing Black People uh, appeals onto this website and we did petitions and we supported lots of families through this website using software which is a website builder crypto scam detector so this has a little bit over 100 users and what it does it is a chrome extension that uses the coin market cap api and it validates whether the website the user is on is a scam or not so if it's in the coin market cap API or coin market cap database, it says the website's safe. If it's not in the coin market cap database, it says that the website's unsafe. Web3, another directory. Um, we're going to make a directory today. It's one of the easiest things you can make, but it was a directory of blockchain resources. So we're about to start the workshop workshop like actually building something does anyone have any questions so if no one has any questions we're going to get started what we're actually going to do today is we're going to build a directory app a progressive web app to be specific and a progressive web app is a hybrid between a mobile application and a website so it has lots of features of a mobile application, but you don't have to download it through the Google Play Store or the App Store. You can visit it at a URL. We're going to use a tool called Glide to do this. So Glide is free, but does have premium features. We're also going to use Google Sheets, and Google Sheets is just where we're going to host our database and our tables. We're going to create a news app and I've entered some information, just a couple entries right now, just to show you how we get started. I usually recommend starting with the backend database and starting with something like this. So usually you'll put the first row as the headers. Here I have headline, description, cover image, category, rating, and date. You can put as much information as you have here. We'll see how it renders with Glide in a little bit. One thing I do want to make a big note of here is we have any image you want with Glide has to be a URL. So here we have a URL. Here we have another URL. And I'll just show you how I've done that. So I would find an image. And all I did, we're creating a news app. And all I did is I went to the internet. I typed in the region. And I just found whatever top news articles there were and just copied them for the sake of the workshop. So did that. 
And what I do, I drag, I put this in my Google, I put this in my Google, uh, Google Drive. And then I click on the image. You want to make sure the image is accessible by the Google spreadsheet. So to do that right now, it's restricted, but I want anyone with the link to be able to access. So I'm just going to copy the link. And I'm going to paste it here. So now we have the beginning of our database ready. What I want to do next is go to Glide. I want to open Glide. And so what you'll see is all the apps I created. Some of these are active, some of these are not active. But what I want to do is go into my team and go to new project. I am going to name this news. App. Now I'm going to select Glide app. You can also create a web app. Um, let's say if you want to create a business dashboard or a dashboard for your school, your university, that might best be in a Glide page, but we're going to do a Glide app. And then you can use a couple different uh, sources. Glide tables is the native built-in data source but you can use Excel, Airtable. We're going to use Google Sheets. And then you want to find the sheet you just created. And then what we'll see is this render. We have options on the left. We have a menu here. We have options on the right. So the first thing I like to do is remove this menu because for this very, very simple directory app, I don't need a menu. And it's as easy as just hiding this. These are pages that have been generated from here, our database. Does someone have a question? Okay. So we're going to work on the style now. I want to make it look more attractive than this. So what I want to do is I want to change the style here. Uh, you can change it to, if I go back, you can change it to tiles, you can change it to calendar. And since we have dates that, that could be good, but it doesn't work for this particular use case um, because we have dates before, um, we have dates that go back pretty far but I want to use cards. And now we can see our image is not rendering. And we can also see we have duplicate title, title and header text. So I want to actually change that. I want to go to edit cards. I want to map the image to the image URL. And now you can see the image is mapped straight away. I want to actually remove the header and the details. I want to put description. So here is starting to look a lot better already. We can also add some logic so there can be an action. So when the user selects the card, we can add an action to it. We can connect it to a webhook and trigger an API. We can use an automation tool called Zapier or we can create an entirely new action or workflow. And whoever's, uh, can someone, can you put yourself on mute, please? And so what we're going to do next is look at the design and maybe change the design so we can change it right now as full size, but we can change it to half size. I like full size. We can change the outline. We can actually remove this altogether. I like it with the outline. We can change the corners to sharp. We can also make it horizontal. So if you wanted some featured posts in our news app, that can be horizontal and then you can put some general ones vertical. We're just gonna leave it vertical for now. We can change the text size and the lines of text. We can also add a button. We are going to do that slightly later. Uh, we're going to also add a tag on this. So we do have a category column. 
And as you can see, it says lifestyle, lifestyle, music. And that's our tag. So the next thing we want to do is to create user profiles. So to do that, we're going to go to user profile here. And I just want to show you what I have in my database. So I have a tab called users. And in there, I have a full name and email. And I do have a title uh, for a profile image. That's the minimum you, you need, but you can add lots of different information. You can add a role, you can add gender, you can add an age, any information associated to a user, you can add here and use in your Glide application. So what we're going to do is actually remap the sheet there. Name is mapped to full name, email mapped to email, image mapped to profile image. Perfect. And I'll show you why we wanted to do that right now. So we can actually allow users to save some of these articles to their favorites. So right now you'll see there's nothing in favorites or we needed the user profile to know which article is going to go to which user. But now we need a way that they can actually save it to their favorites. So this is where the button overlay comes in. We simply go to favorite. You see the heart sign there. And if we click that, we can see it's now being saved in our favorites. If we click that again, it's being removed in our removed from our favorites. What we also want to do is change the detail screen. So when we click on this, we can see the article shows up, which might be perfect for us, but I don't actually like the way this looks. So I'm going to make some changes. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a header image. And to do that, I have to go to the components. It gives me an option to add lots of different images. For example, you can see a buy button. If you want to create an e-commerce app, you can see reaction, you can see likes, which we're actually going to add a light, but to add an image, we're going to do that and add an image. And now we need to map the image to the actual image. And what you can see, this image appears here. Now we can change the style of this. I like this size. We can add an action to the image, but we're just going to leave that. So I do like the title. I want to actually remove the details, the category. Let's see if we can do that. I'll just put custom and just remove that. But I can't actually format this as it is. So if I want to format this, I need to add a different component. So I would need to add the text component. I believe it's the text component. I would need to put that up there. We're going to scroll back up. I'm going to change that to headline. I'm going to change that to H1. And now I got a centered um, headline and I'm going to remove this title. Lastly, what we, we have rich text here and I think we want to do the same thing because we want to format this and this particular component doesn't allow us to format. We are going to add the text component. I'm going to put this back here. Put it in the wrong place. And so what I want to do here is I want to put the description. I want to use justify. And now we have this article. And again, I've just copied and pasted this from the internet. You can either allow users to upload articles and create articles, or you can do a similar thing and copy and paste just like me. So what we're also going to do, we're going to remove this. We have a date. 
So I think I want to raise the date just above. We have a rating. So if we can go back and see the date, we have a rating. So I think I might want to raise the rating just above two. So you can see the rating there, but right now, currently it doesn't have a rating and actually I'm using the wrong component for a rating. So I just deleted that and I want to find the rating component, which is here. I'm going to raise that to be above the headline. Just below the date. And now if I click the rating component, I want it to be out of five stars. It's currently mapped to rating column. So if I select this, it goes four out of five. But also when I go to my backend database, we should see rating four. So here, Currently, users can edit this article, which we don't actually want. So the way we're going to remove this is we're going to click on the edit button. And we're going to remove the option to allow users to delete. But actually, we want to go a step further than that. We want to go to edit form and stop users editing. You can add a condition to say users can only edit when their role is an admin or when they have certain amount of points or you can add conditions, but we're just going to stop users and allowing users to edit. And the last thing I personally want to do is I want to remove. If I click on this. I think I might leave it actually. I'll just leave this. I'll leave this right here. We also have the ability to for users to search and for them to add new articles. So if we speak a little bit about the add-in functionality, so right here, when we click here, users can add their headline, they can add a description. Right now, a description is notes. So when they click on it, they can write the notes of the article. They can copy and paste the article. Um, a cover image URL. What we can allow right now is a text property. We don't want that. We want it to be an image. So we can use something called an image picker where it just allows them to upload the image directly and they don't have to add a URL. What we have here is a text entry for category. That's not entirely correct. Uh, we would want a drop down menu. To actually utilize the drop down menu, we have to create a separate table. So category drop down and I uh, say categories lifestyle music. So if I actually go back, I'm going to remove this text entry. Um, Mr. Dominic, I have a question. Yeah. Uh, can can we link our database to the website directly? To the website directly? To which website? Wh which website do you want to link it to? Uh, I uh, I mean that uh, our database yeah. uh, in in. In a way that can uh, be automatically uh, written in the app uh, we are uh, designing now. 
Um, so this this is automatically connected. So any update, any update here automatically updates to the database. Is that what you're asking? Yeah. Okay. Does that does that answer your question? Uh, how 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 did you link the database? How did you link the database? So when we create, so we created a database first, remember, and then when we created the news app and we selected the database we want wanted, it automatically linked them. Okay, okay. Yeah. Thank you. So when a user, let's say a user adds something here, it adds to this database that we linked it to. And I'll, I'll show you now. So we created a drop down menu. We had this drop down um, rating. We want to change this property from a text entry to a rating picker. And I will show you now a good example. So I am going to just say, hello world. I'm going to say, hello world. I am going to add a cover image. I'm going to select a category. And I'm going to select a date, click add. So not only does it add here, this is what we just added. And you can see it maintains the same format um, I created. But when we go to our database and we go to news, we can see it's updated here too. So the last thing we, the last thing we want to do, and I'm just going to check the messages. Uh, yes, just I want to answer. Uh, yeah. I want to ask a question. Uh, yeah. Like uh, we are in Africa continent, and yeah. I believe all like uh, the people there, we don't uh, have that specs or from devices strong or high performance devices to work on or to coding is this website is like use a high amount of uh, performance or resources of the computer or just like uh, because it's run on Chrome uh, doesn't need that huge resource uh, resources to use. No. So I'm actually running it on Chrome, but you can use Safari, Firefox. Um, you don't have to download anything. It's all happening in the cloud. Um, the way I've shown you is using Google. Yeah. Um, you don't necessarily have to use Google, but I think that's one of the easiest ways. Um, if the if you can't use Google, uh, let me know, and probably I'll follow up and suggest some other ways to do it. But no, it doesn't take a lot of resources, not at all. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, I have another question. Yeah. Like now, you are developing on uh, iOS platform. I I can see here like an Apple iPhone yeah. device. Like can yeah yeah yeah. I see the list now. You can change it to Android and yeah. uh, tablet. But this is just the preview, right? This is just showing you what it looks yeah. like. It's not the actual app. Can, the actual uh, progressive web app can be seen on anything. But this is just the preview. So you can preview it on um, iOS, or you can preview it on Apple. Okay, thank you. No problem. So we're nearly finished. I, this is a very, very basic tutorial, giving you a basic overview. You can put videos in here, you can put audio in here, you can connect it to APIs and use AI technology and do some really interesting things. But this is a basic directory news app. What I want to show you next is some of the settings and how to add additional customization. So we can change the name. We have my name as the author. Uh, news app as the description. 
we we may want to add an icon. We can change the appearance. So right now you can see there's an orange color. We can change that to green or red. But we can also change. So right now it's matching my device theme, which is in dark mode. But if I remove that, it will look something like this. We can change it to look like this. So I kind of like that one. So you can, with the pro version, you can make it responsive. So when it opens in a desktop, it looks really, really nice, but you have to pay for that. Um, this is optimized for mobile usage. We can control the privacy, so we can make a private app. We can make an app where people have to sign in with their email, or we can make a public app. So I'm going to make this an app where people have to sign up with their email. Um, I'm going to allow Google login. And the last thing we want to do is the sign in screen. So we can customize the sign in screen. So I'm just going to write the name of the app. If we upgrade to the pro version, we can add a background here and we can add a logo here. I typically don't worry about that to begin with. The next thing I want to do is publish. So I just go to the top, click publish. I can change the subdomain. So I have that as the subdomain and I click publish. If I upgrade, I can add a custom domain. But if you're just doing this for fun, if you're doing this to experiment with it, you don't necessarily need to upgrade. So when we look at it on a computer, it looks something like this. Um, it's going to ask me to either give my email address or sign in with Google. I'm just going to put sign in with Google for now. And then I'm going to sign in with my Google account. So now it's logging me in. And as you can see, it has our articles here. We can click, we can read, we can add a rating. There's so much, there's so many more other features you can add if you want to add, but this is just a brief overview. Does anybody have any questions since we're finished? Uh, okay, also I have uh, like some questions. Uh, well, now, um, someone who started to learn a uh, letter on how to developing uh, our making applications and native one and for all platforms uh, i believe with a flutter but is this like uh, like there is there any conversion between them or it's is there one better than the another um, and what's you recommend for use well well, learning Flutter, I think learning Flutter is, is always a good idea. And learning how to program, I think, is always a good idea. It just takes time. So as you can see, we've created this initial app in maybe an hour um, by ourselves. Uh, yeah. If you wanted to respond, if you wanted to build an app for a local business, you could do the same thing. If you wanted yeah. to build an app to solve some social issue locally, you could do something really yes. quickly that's low maintenance that you don't have to take a lot of time to do. Um, there's another tool I'll show you. Okay. There's another tool called Flutterflow and it's a, it's a little bit more complicated. <clears throat> it uses Firebase. Oh, I got them. Hello. Oh, no. I have a question about, uh, how I can uh, search in, in this, uh, web, uh, if I want, uh, like uh, create a uh, website uh, application, I mean. Uh, what I can write, because uh, uh, this is an interface or this is a web. So uh, so I just finished, uh, I finished the last... Me or, uh, I understand you. I mean. 
Yeah, I'll finish the last question and then I'll, oh. then I'll answer your question. So the question about Flutterflow and Flutter and the differences with Glide, yes. you can't use, you can't inject, yes, you can't inject any code. You could probably, you can't inject any code in an easy way. Um, with Flutterflow, it's different. You build, as you can see, in a drag and drop interface, but you can actually export it as Flutter code. So if you wanted to extend functionality, actually using Flutter code, you could. Okay. But, with, but it's more complicated and it takes more time. But with with Glide, it's, it's a lot easier. It's, it's what I usually tell with beginners. Okay, like, uh, I believe uh, uh, more than, like, uh, like if it's more advanced, can uh, the website can give the users or the developers the ability to make an advanced app with, with exactly. the more details, more uh, more ways to use. Exactly. Um, but it's especially what I focus on, what I typically focus on is, like, social impact and creating things for social impact. And typically the things for social impact don't need to be really complicated. They just need to be made. Yeah. So this was the site I made for missing black people in the UK. And you can see all the places it was, it was featured in. And it was really, really simple. It was a simple website. Yeah, yes. And, and I wouldn't need to, I wouldn't necessarily need to code to do something like this. Maybe something, something complex with AI. I may need to, but even then, I've created tools. Um, so here's a tool I made, which is a review generator using AI. So you select three words, and it creates a review for you. Again, I didn't use, I didn't program anything. But if you want to, if you want to, you can disguise the limit. Programming allows you to create really, really complex things. Um, usually at the beginning, you don't have to create complex things. Okay. So we'll see here. It generated the review for me. And all I did is select three words and I use G GPT free to do that. Um, somebody asked a question about web or something similar to that. Uh, yes, uh, also is our uh, member in the team core. Um, he asked about the, the 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 ability to search in the website itself, like the beginning. Uh, I, I didn't see him at the beginning when it start. Okay. When we start. Yeah. So we so in in our news app we do have a search functionality. So if someone types in rival, that's in the headline that is searching. So that's, that's a part of the functionality. I can add and remove that. So if I go to, let's find where it is. So here, options, show search bar. I can add a search filter and filter based on headline or something specific. Um, search articles, I could put a placeholder and you can see the search there. So if someone puts uh, music, maybe that one will show up. Does that answer the question? No, thank you. Uh, okay, Mr. Dominic, I have a question. Yeah. Uh, uh, is the uh, is there a, a relationship between this way uh, and UI UX design? Um, the way we this particular tool is limited functionality. Um, it's limited design flexibility. This particular tool. So as you as you saw when I went to to create the design, all I could do is change the color, change the theme. I can't. I couldn't change too much. Of these components, if we go back here, 
cards, I can change the size, but it only gives me two options. I can change the card style, but it gives me three options. Um, there is another tool. Um, it's called Bravo Studio. If you're familiar with Figma, it allows you to create a native app directly from Figma. So it's called Bravo Studio. It allows designers to create a native app directly from Figma. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah. Are there any other questions? Uh, yes. Uh, like if, uh, let's, like as example, if I am a beginner now, yes, I want to, to build an app. Yeah. Uh, it's required for me to to know the basics of coding or just like use this u utility or like this website and uh, an other website to build up without uh, like knowing the basics yeah. at all. So so you're in school right now learning how to program and learning how to build software with coding. And I think that's very, very valuable, but that's going to that's taking you some time. If you wanted to build an app next week, I would tell you to use this or use a similar tool while you're learning how to code is it's, it's, it's good to know how to do both again this is for the speed and simplicity i don't know there might be during covid people were using this to track to tell people where to go in terms of beds um in india in terms of beds and where resources are available like it's, it's good for things like that Okay. So I don't know. There might be concerts. You want to tell. So we've created a news app, but you could create an events app. You could create a um, a, a e learning platform where you get all these really good videos from YouTube, or you can create your own videos and you can put it on this app. And all you had to do okay. is just upload the data to a spreadsheet. Or you could create an app for a local business and, and get paid money to create apps for local businesses. Uh, okay, I like uh, there, of course, is not uh, free at all. Like you have to pay to get the, another features. Like if uh, I'm, uh, I want to build, build an app for a company or yeah. like for a small business, and I want to uh, have the full uh, version of website or the tool. Like it's going to be useful. Uh, like I can like uh, uh, I don't know, but sometimes at some website when you pay yeah. for the all features, sometimes not that useful. Yeah. Not giving you any new thing. Yeah. So so with this, it it, it, it is. I think it is useful even if it's just for the domain like remember i'm using a subdomain here for the domain yeah. it is useful but also here it is not responsive on desktops with the full feature it, it would be responsive on desktop um so yeah but again but that's as a freelancer it's not a big issue for yeah. you because the business is the one that pays for it uh, yes It's my questions. Like I don't know if anyone wants to ask. No, no, thank yeah, you. Mr. Mr. Doing, uh, I have a question, but not related to the workshop topic. Can okay. I ask you? Yeah. Okay. Uh, you are a product manager, right? Sorry. Yeah, product manager. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I I have a passion about this topic and. Uh, I think in the future, uh, I will be a product manager. Yeah. Uh, what advice you can give me? Now? I think you're on a good path. I'll write some things in, in, in here. So are you studying computer science right now? Uh, no, uh, I am studying electrical engineering. Okay. So I'll write some things here. Um, and it's good things to Google 
to learn how to do. Um, so a product manager is primarily responsible for the strategic direction of a product. Um, if you're working at a company like Google or Facebook or Meta or Amazon, chances are you're working on a very, very, very small feature. If you're working on a smaller company, you're probably working on like the entire product or like one of the product lines if they have multiple products. Uh, you manage the engineers. Um, the engineers are not directly underneath you. The, they're directly underneath the team lead, but you kind of, you, you're you basically telling the, the engineering team what they should build. You typically work with the marketing and sales team too to ensure the right communications are going out about the product, but also you're getting good feedback from customers that you can use to make decisions. You usually work closely with like the CIO or the CTO or the CEO to make sure the product direction is in is aligned with the business goals. So that's a brief overview of um, like kind of being a product manager and what a product manager does. Another very, very good resource is Product School. So it's productschool.com. So just see if you're interested in it, learn more about it, read more about it. And it will be great if you could maybe get an internship as a product manager or as maybe what will be closer to your industry, maybe a project manager. Um, in construction, I actually, my official title in construction was virtual design construction manager. But the role I was doing was more like a product manager. So on my resume, when you look at my resume, it's just product manager but my official title was virtual design and construction manager. And even if you can get an internship as a project manager, it's, it's not that big a jump to become a product manager. But definitely look at companies online, look at, look at job listings online and the skills they require. Okay, thank you very much, thank you. Does anybody else have any yeah. questions? Yeah, something come up. Uh, uh, Mike also is out of the topic, uh, <laughs> but uh, uh, now uh, I, I have seen the platform that offer a certificate for a specific uh, field like user experience and user interface, yeah. technical uh, support, and a lot of, of certificate, like uh, as example, Coursera, Udemy, and like, I want to ask, like outside, when someone apply for a job, as example, yeah. or uh, yeah, apply for a job, like, is uh, when they see the resume or the CV, they it's something value for for the person, or just as like uh, like uh, any certificate he or she can get. I think the and I'm not an expert in like jobs. <laughs> I've been in the job market, but I'm not an expert in in jobs. But I think it's uh for example, what role am I thinking about? Let's find the role and show you a good example. Okay. So here, there's a role yeah. open for a music technology startup as a product manager. So what you want to what you want to make sure in your resume, you want to line it up with what they have here as much as possible. So if they have here a passion for combining technology and music you want to have that in your resume, but kind of like demonstrating how you've done that. So maybe you created, you use Glide to create a music technology app locally, 
and you got a hundred, two hundred, a thousand users, um, as we as we already have here, we already have one to do with music. But you want to line it up with the role as much as possible and kind of adapt your resume to what the role is. So here, it has preferred qualifications, experience working with multiple functional areas, like that, because this is a product product manager role, and that's what product managers do. And so you want yeah. to have a way in your resume that kind of ticks off, hey, you have experience working with multifunctional areas. Yeah. Well, like because uh it's in, in the last uh uh like uh yeah, because nowadays we're going to see like we see uh in the tiktok youtube they the youtubers are the how to say it like the famous celebrity like yeah. uh Promotion or promote for uh, that certificate. Last example, the courses that from Google yeah. and uh, another platform. It, uh, they say instead for studying for uh, four years in the college, you can just study for six months, and uh, you are like example someone who studied in the college. Yeah, there are pathways. Um, there are part. You guys are already in 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 college, so. So you're kind of on that path, but there are pathways yes. where you don't have to get a, a four year, like I was in school for four years. There are pathways where you don't have to get a four year degree. Um, I would, I would drop some resources here if I can remember them. Okay. Really appreciate it. So for cybersecurity, this is one of the best tools. It's free, but they do have like paid, paid things on it. Um, but I think it's a very, very good tool um, for cybersecurity. Um, you also have Microsoft. Your cloud certification. So, cloud technologies. I believe this is your cloud uh, certification. I'm not sure if it's free. It might be. I'm not sure if it's free. I can't remember if it's free. Um, Amazon also have one. Uh, Amazon APS or something like that. I don't uh, remember. Google also have one, but Google have it, have it in marketing also. So Google have a free marketing one as well as, um, so Google cloud. Yeah. Oh no, the Google cloud certification. So yeah, so I shared with you cloud computing and uh, cyber security. So they yeah. can help. There are well, pathways. Like... There are pathways to be able to um, get a job and get a decent job without um, without going to university. Um, <clears throat> but it's about what works for you. Well, uh, it's like uh, great resources, and I really appreciate it. No problem. Oh, and uh, in in the club we have uh, something called Quick Labs. Uh, this is a feature from Google, and uh, it's a paid feature. Uh, but uh, 
as a core team, you have a free access. You mm -hmm. can learn uh, some tracks like machine learning, yeah. Google Cloud, and uh, it is um, yani, uh, more than uh, academic. It is uh, it have a lot of uh, practice, test, and uh, something like workshops. Yeah. This is a great, uh, great opportunity for you. Mm -hmm. So uh, we can talk it, uh, talk about it later on. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that sounds good. That sounds good. So if there's no questions, I'm finished my side. Um, I shared some resources with you. This is recorded, so I you'll be able to watch this back and share this with other people in the club that might have missed it. Uh, thank you well, very uh, much, Mr. Dominic, for your time, and uh, we hope to see you again. And uh, uh, you, you, you are the we are the fairest club in this in Sudan yeah. who uh, who uh, invite something. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yeah, like uh, <laughs> like we we like the first club in Sudan, uh, like have a cooperation with uh, someone who outside the country or outside the continent. Yeah, uh, it's really something great, uh, something amazing, and I believe we get a lot of benefits as well. Like uh, something can really work on. And we really, we really appreciate it, and yeah. uh, really, really, uh, thank you for your time. No, it's it's really it's really my pleasure. It's one of the reasons. Um, my family is actually from Jamaica, and I did a workshop with a university in Jamaica last week. Um, I'm interested. I, I love working with students and people in Africa, in the Caribbean, in Latin America. Yeah. Um, though that's where I love. Uh, working with students definitely speak amongst each other um and find if, if you could if where you would be able to help me if you can find ways to make this more consistent in your school or in your country um obviously i don't understand the local dynamics in the country but if if this was a program in your country would it be valuable if it would be valuable what what would be the best way to do it would it have to i know i know there's every country is having challenges but it's like would it have to come from government would it have to come from the university would it have to come from something bigger like the un like where where would the program have to come from uh like in our country like in sudan right yeah uh well like our people here like uh, not interested in technology at all like just a uh, little amount of people yeah uh they are i believe the majority of them they are students and after the the, the that promoting of technology and programming uh the people and students especially uh, starting to search about it and to search how to start programming how to start to write the code and um, like uh here no they don't use the social media that much but if there are any website that use it uh it's facebook if you are especially in sudan here want to promote for some something to like uh marketing and marketing or for news mm -hmm. uh facebook is the best website to do it and everyone like like every sudanese people uh, have an account i believe in facebook yeah Okay, that's interesting. This is something I'll think about, but we will definitely speak more about how we can make it more consistent for the students yeah, and the course. ones that are interested. Um, I'm a huge advocate about technology being able to help solve so social issues, and it needs yeah. to be in the hands of local people that know the local area and know how to solve it the best. Yeah, of course, and like uh, you like. Uh, your presentation now or this meeting is one of the uh, like how you say it, uh, one of the step to to do it yeah definitely so you have my email we'll definitely stay in touch and hopefully plan future workshops i am going to follow up with an email on the recording too yeah all right yeah, yeah yes of course yes thank you bye Thank, uh, you. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, see you.